Hi everyone, my name is Vinod. I work as an HR leader in the Bay Area and I run this channel called Win Career Talks to spread awareness about careers to students. So a lot of students are getting ready for the placement season and are working on their resumes. And one of the most sought after departments is the Department of Computer Science. And students have questions around what is the right resume to create? What is the template to use? What do recruiters look for? So I wanted to cover a bunch of these topics during this session and talk about how to create a really good and solid resume for this field of computer science. So before I jump in, I'm gonna share my screen about some of the things recruiters look for as they try to evaluate their resume in the space of computer science. So if you've seen my earlier videos, I've covered mechanical engineering, civil engineering, I've covered uh, different spaces and I've talked about the best resume templates. And the space of computer science is very unique because it is not just about presenting your resume, but it's also about presenting how good you are with skill sets. You know, that's very important. This is unlike every other department and every other specialization. So your skill level is as important as your actual resume. So instead of using a standard resume template, I suggest that you can also play around with using a very different template. And this is something I'll download it from the internet. So I'll give you a link to this resume template in my description. And you can also use a standard resume template for a computer science job, but, but again, both works. So only for the space of computer science does the fact that you can create two separate resumes and get away with it. But for every other discipline, I recommend that you stick to a standard resume template. So let's talk about this alternate resume template first and then move on to a standard resume template. So make sure that you list your name right at the top. I would recommend that you list your phone number, your email ID, your LinkedIn ID right at the top, just below your name. I think it's very important. I am not a big fan of this specific template where it lists your contact details on the right-hand side. I would typically say that when recruiters look at the resume, the first thing they look for is, what is your name? Are all the contact details listed right at the top? That is your phone number, location, email ID, LinkedIn ID. These are things which have to be there right at the top. So you wanna make sure the objective is captured right below as the first section. So here it says that it's a passion computer science engineer looking for so-and-so things. It's very important because recruiters have no idea whether they're applying for an internship or a full-time job. They get hundreds of resumes every day. So make sure you list your objective very clearly right at the top below your name. And then you jump into work experience. So when you write about your work experience, you're typically talking about internships, project experience or research experience. So I would say that either you can put your education at the top or you can put your experience at the top. If you have a lot of experience, you may wanna put your experience at the top. If you don't have much experience, you may wanna put your education at the top. So as you list down your experience, make sure you list down your internship experience in terms of saying, what is it you did? Like, what sort of project did you drive? What was the conclusion? What was the impact? So those are things you wanna write. So I'm not a big fan of this exact words out here saying that I created a, like, a new code that eliminated 15,000 lines of code. I feel that you need to really talk about what was the expectation? How did you add value? And for example, the commended 5X by management for efficiency and development skills. I think it's a reflection of what was the impact, but the person doesn't really talk about what is the work allocated to him. Make sure that you write about what your project was, what did you do? and what was the impact. So that's really, you need to touch on all three of these parameters as you flesh down each bullet point. Remember that if it's a bullet point, which is incomplete, you should not put up a full stop at the end of it. But if it's a complete bullet point, yes, you can put a full stop at the end of it. So here, bullet two, it ends with a full stop. I would say that um, ideally, I would probably not put a full stop at the end of it. It's not a complete sentence. So it's more of a part of a sentence. Create a new code that eliminated 15,000 lines of code. Again, did you do the work? Did somebody else do the work? So make sure that you write your contributions very clearly. So that's kind of how I would put it. List down all your experiences. If you don't have 
internship experiences, make sure that you can capture either some research experience and work with a professor or something else where you made an impact. It could even be a nonprofit experience if you have actually led a team. You, For example, if you work during COVID, led a team, created a big impact, you, can, you could actually capture that under experience. Under education, you want to put your degree, university, your GPA, if it is above your marks and percent, if it's above 7 out of 10 or 7.5 out of 10, you may want to list it. Otherwise, if it's a low grade point average or a cumulative grade point average, you may not want to put it here. Talk about the classes you took. So this person has not listed the classes, but make sure that you list your classes in uh, the courses you took under education. The time you graduate is also important. So I'll show you a separate resume template where you can enter clearly when you graduated in terms of your date of month and year. Projects, I think you've done a good job in terms of saying what the person did, but it doesn't cover what the impact was. So make sure you capture some of it. And if you don't have an impact, that's okay to miss it, but make sure that you link it to metrics as much as possible because every company wants folks who are good with metrics who can use data to validate what they did. This person has done a bunch of activities, a bunch of projects involved in uh, contests, They're all great, it stands out. And I think that's an advantage with computer science is that you can work on a bunch of projects, you can work on research experience with professors and you can capture that as part of your resume. In terms of skills, it's very important for computer science to say whatever you put out here, do a self rating and make sure that, for example, if you claim that you're good in SQL, Python, Java, you've got to be proficient. So use a five point scale and rate yourself that helps. If you're good in C++ uh, coding, you may want to capture that specifically saying this is what you're good in. In terms of leadership and all that, I think there's not a very high expectations for companies because they know that most people undergrads or just finished the master's program, they may not have work experience, they may not have led teams. So it's okay even if you're not great in leadership, um, um, but you need to have very basic communication skills. They look for very basic collaboration skills. And irrespective of what you put out here, they will ask you questions during the interview process to judge how good you are. So those are ways by which you can predict the questions which are gonna come at you. Make sure that whatever you list as programming languages uh, links to the skills as defined by the recruiter. So go to the career section of the recruiting company where you wanna join. For example, if you wanna say, join a company like DE Shaw, go to their website and look at the careers page, identify some jobs which are similar to the jobs you're interested in and click on the job opening. There's a section called skills under there. Go to skills, identify what are those skills you're looking for and try to make sure that skill is captured in some way, either directly in terms of the skills you list out here or indirectly in terms of some of the coursework you did which adds to the skills. So the more of connections you draw between your resume and the skills, the greater the chance of you being selected for an interview process. So if you don't have a connection between your resume and the skills as defined by the company, there's almost no chance of you getting in into that company. So this is an insider trick, which very, very few people know about, but I'm telling this to students listening in this channel because it's an easy way to use skills as defined by the employer to include that as part of your LinkedIn profile or as part of your resume and easily get noticed. So I'm going to share the template in this earlier slide as part of my description in my YouTube video. But um, let me also talk about a standard template. This is typically what most companies use, um, uh, you at least used to use in the past. And even when you're looking for academic jobs in the space of computer science, typically this is the expectation that um, you use this older template, but well-recognized template. And ideally for every other specialization like mechanical engineering, civil engineering, this really is a template to be used, not other templates. Make sure you don't write about things like your, your you don't enclose your photograph, don't put things like a date of birth, whether you're married or not. These things are, should not even enter a resume. So make sure that these mistakes are never made. Follow this standard pattern and this template is something I've enclosed as part of description. I've created a template just for Indian students studying engineering. So if you can use a template as part of the description box, you can actually create a similar resume. So let's talk about how this resume stands out. So I see the name at the top, see the contact details, 
Um, I don't see the LinkedIn ID, but still I see at least a phone number and email ID and the email ID of the institution. So that's good. I see career objective, which is awesome because I want to see what is it the student is wanting to apply for. Under education, I see that again, university date of graduation, which is month and day, a month and year is listed. It talks about what they're graduating in, which specialization, and also uh, if they've got some uh, honors, like for example, are they top of class? Um, do they have a good grade point average? These things, it will not influence a recruiter a lot, but definitely it'll make it stand out a little compared to others. What happens is sometimes people don't have exactly have a computer science degree. They may have an information technology degree or information systems degree. So it's good to if, mention that if you have a computer science degree, make sure it's captured explicitly out there. Now let's go on to related courses. So this is where you need to look at the skills as I talked about earlier, go to the career section, click job posting, go to skills and make sure that the courses you talk about in terms of what you did in your undergrad or master's program link to the skills as defined by the recruiter. So that's very, very important. Also the technical skills you put here have to match what the recruiter is looking for. So this will mean that for every resume, you will have to recreate uh, I mean, for every job posting, you'll have to recreate a resume because you want to customize that specific resume for the specific job. It's a lot of work, but unless you do it, it's very difficult uh, in terms of chances of being selected. If you have work experience, for example, if you have project experience, if you have research experience under a professor or if you worked on projects, make sure you list it here. So capture that under experience. If you have leadership skills, if you've been part of, um, say, student committees, if you have led a certain team, make sure you capture those details out here. You can skip the foreign language. That's more for US students. But Indian students should focus on work experience and leadership skills. I think these are things to really make your resume stand out. Even leadership skills are not that important because for consulting jobs, finance jobs, the leadership skills could be important. But for hardcore computer science jobs, it's really about what you have done in that space typically it's either internships project experience internship uh, i mean um, working with professors research experience so those are things companies look for when you craft your work experience make sure you use verbs as part of your bullet point so begin with the verb like action verb um, make sure you write things like, like for example if you collaborated on a certain project use the word collaborated um, if you have, for example, led a certain project, use the word led. So those are things, action words, which create an impact. Talk about what you did and also the impact you made. So here, I don't see any impact listed out here, but yes, you should be adding impact uh, if you indeed in, ended up creating an impact. Always be as honest in your resume as possible because interviewers are trained to pick up on things which don't make sense and they can throw your resume away if they feel that uh, you are stretching the boundary in terms of exactly what you did. Okay, folks, now I come to the end of my video. So before you close, uh, I would say that please subscribe to this channel and let me know in the comments in terms of uh, if you, do you have any questions or uh, do you have any thoughts around um, specific ways by which I can talk about further videos on this topic. You can also reach out to me on WhatsApp. It's in my description. You, know, you can ask me questions directly. I'm happy to help students as they prep for placement seasons. Thanks everyone, I appreciate it. Have a good one.